there's been a lot of online traffic talking about the Peak 4 and its potential performance in the hydroboiling game. So recently I purchased a 4 meter Peak 4 Kai to see if I could use it in medium to high winds in Oklahoma on my hydrofoil setup. So I just received the peak last week and not much wind for a couple days. So Charles and I went out and we did a little bit of buggy kiting with the Peak 4. It was a good time for me to fly the kite a little bit, get pretty aggressive with some kite flying skills with such a small foil kite. But these were conditions of maybe 8 to 12 miles per hour. Nothing like I would be looking forward to on the water on a hydrofoil. But it was a lot of fun. I felt like the kite handled really well on land. But that's not really the reason I purchased it. My expectations, realistic or not at this time, I didn't know, were much greater than this. So today was the day to try it out. Today we had winds at Lake Hefner in Oklahoma City between 18 and 30 with gusts in the mid to high 30s throughout the entire day. And believe it or not, this Peak 4 in the 4 meter size handled things extremely well. So what I'd like to go through is a really quick assessment of how I thought the peak performed in these high wind conditions. Because honestly, I haven't seen a lot of conversations online about when you get into the mid 20s, upper 20s, or low 30s as far as how it performs on the water. To begin with, I started with my Fly Surfer bar setup, and it's on a 19 meter setup, so fairly short lines with such high wind conditions. It looks like you're carrying a poncho bag, yet this thing has the ability to foil you all over the water. It's simply amazing that something of this size and weight has this potential. The launch for the Peak was extremely easy. I will say it does not launch very well through a human being. But besides that, it's extremely friendly on the launch. A lot of people have complained about the way that it flutters a lot, and yes, there is some fluttering with the kite, but I wouldn't say it's substantial. I wouldn't say it's annoying and I felt like it fluttered more as you kept the kite overhead. The more you kept it deeper in the window, I didn't notice or recognize the flutter so much. One of my main concerns with such a small foil kite was on the water start, but I really had a significant amount of power, so because I was riding in 20 to 35 mile an hour winds, the start was actually extremely easy. Many times I came up on the very first dive of the kite, no issues whatsoever. My other great worry in the peak, of course, is on water relaunch. So goal number one for the day, if nothing else, was do not let the kite touch the water. And I can say that I successfully accomplished that mission. I am worried, from what I see, it looks like it's 50-50 on whether or not you're able to relaunch the kite when it does hit the water. I'm not for sure that my skill level is there to relaunch that peak off of the water considering that it's this single skin foil. What you recognize immediately with the Peak is that it drifts phenomenally well. You have absolutely no issues just kicking it out and riding downwind. And in these current conditions, like two foot rollers, being able to just release the kite, not worry about it and play around on some little rollers. I'm sure that it would be also great in the waves, but the drifting of the kite is really great. And so what goes with that as well, on the other side of it is, it's not a great upwind kite. Uh, no one claims that it is a great upwind kite. If I didn't have a hydrofoil, I doubt that I would be able to go upwind using this kite with anything else underneath my feet. I was able to hold ground and go upwind slightly, but that's mainly because of the hydrofoil. And remember, I am using my Delta Cozumel wing, which is the larger, more lifty wing, which doesn't have a lot of dig. and It's not going to have a lot of upwind performance, but don't expect these sharp upwind angles that you may be currently experiencing on your hydrofoil. But do expect unbelievable drift downwind and being able to just carve and play with your foil a lot while you release the kite. In such a high wind day, there was a point today where I, where I went in, got my nine meter Duotone Rebel, went out and rode the twin tip a little bit to do some boosting. And at one point on one of my jumps, I landed downwind pretty hard and came over the front of my board and I thought well I'll just ride this out as the board came off my feet. So as I was skipping along like a top water jig on the surface of the water, I was de-pants. I mean two millimeter long pants de-pants. Thankfully there was no video footage of this 
not that there was much to see. But this also will add to the list of reasons why I'm getting very, very close to switching completely over to a seat harness. If you are a progressing hydrofoiler and you're working on transitions, I will say this kite, do not expect it to be the sole. It is not going to, first of all, boost you off of the water. And secondly, it has very minimal, if any, lift whatsoever. So when you're going into your transitions and foot switches, don't expect there to be a lot of weight being lifted by the kite overhead to make it easier to make your foot switches. Which I think long term can actually be a better thing because you're getting more efficient with a kite that has very little lift and then when you go back to your more lifty kites, like for instance I ride a sole, then I believe it's going to carry over and it's going to make those even easier. It definitely wasn't impossible, uh, especially in such windy conditions because on the foot switch whenever I would switch direction we had a pretty good push of rollers coming in so whenever I made the turn and switched feet I really didn't have to have the kite there because I was able to stay up on foil because of the good lift from my hydrofoil uh, before switching directions and then letting the kite take over after that. And then of course the big point that everybody talks about is budget and price. Can you beat the price of this kite? And I would say you can't beat the price of this kite if your expectations are realistic. And if those realistic expectations are to be able to fly a kite, a small one such as a four meter peak four and ride it on a hydrofoil in winds of 13 to 40. I mean, today I never felt scary overpowered whatsoever. If your other expectation is to be able to have something very compact, easy set up, take down, that drifts extremely well, then I would say this is a great solution. But if you're looking for something that has great upwind riding ability, that has great boost, which it doesn't at all, or if you're looking for a kite that makes no sound and no fluttering in the air, then this isn't the kite for you. But the value you get in this kite, in this price point, was way beyond what I was expecting. Thanks for watching this quick assessment on the Peak 4 for hydrofoiling. Reach out to these guys for all your kiteboarding gear needs and also subscribe, like, and comment whenever you get a chance. I would love to hear some feedback from you on your Peak 4 and what you're experiencing. We'll see you next time on the OK Kiteboard.